So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the best cameras for photography. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. Today's digital cameras offer a far refined experience than a few years ago, and smartphone market shifts have sparked newfound innovations amongst the camera market. So much so, today's models are even more capable and ready to provide a substantial upgrade in image quality. Sure, a smartphone is capable, but that only gets photographers so far. And if you yearn for better images, more creative control, or more flexibility, then the dedicated camera for photography is best. But when it comes to the best cameras for photography, there's quite a lot of options, and there's also quite a broad range of cameras available to fit the suit. Plus, if you're a beginner, there's a few factors to consider beforehand to help narrow your search. With that, in today's video, we'll cover a detailed guide outlining the factors to consider beforehand, which you can find in the link in the description box down below or the pinned comment, and we'll also cover the best cameras for photography on the present market. Coming at number 5, Panasonic's Lumix G9. Panasonic's G9 is the company's flagship Micro Four Thirds stills camera. Released in 2018, it features a 20 megapixel sensor, 1080p 120 frames per second, and 4K 60 frames per second video. It also provides a 3 inch very angle touchscreen, image stabilization, dual card slots, weather sealing, USB charging, HDR, and wireless connectivity. The G9 uses a 225 point autofocusing system with Panasonic's DFD technology for lightning fast responsiveness. But crucially, it's one of the few cameras in this segment to remove the optical low pass filter from the sensor, greatly enhancing fine detail and image quality. It also provides sensor based stabilization rated for six and a half stops, letting you capture sharp handheld shots at one tenth second shutter speeds without fear. Plus it shoots at an awe inspiring 20 frames per second with autofocus or 60 frames per second without. And it offers the high res shot mode capturing 80 megapixel raw images in camera. Overall, Panasonic's G9 is extraordinary for photography, and as the company's flagship camera in this realm, it makes sense. It comes hard stacked with powerful features photographers will appreciate and remains a breakthrough amongst Panasonic's lineup. Coming at number four, Sony's A6100. Sony's A6100 replaces the Hallmark A6000. Released in 2019, it features a 24 megapixel sensor, 1080p 120 frames per second and 4K 30 frames per second video. It also provides a 3 inch flipping touchscreen, USB charging, time lapse, panorama, HDR, and wireless connectivity. The A6100 uses Sony's class leading 425 point autofocusing system with real time AF, and despite its entry level classification, it stands as one of the best performing cameras at tracking subjects and animals, yet one that does so shooting at 11 frames per second, making it a doubly capable option for sports and wildlife. Overall, Sony's A6100 is quite a powerful entry level camera, and its leaps and bounds were fined over the original A6000, yet it does so with class leading innovations and at a price point that remains approachable for most. Coming in at number 3, Canon's EOS RP. Canon's EOS RP remains the most affordable full frame camera to date, but a powerful option indeed. Released in 2019, it features a 26 megapixel sensor, 1080p 60 frames per second, and 4K 20 frames per second video. It also provides a 3 inch very angle touchscreen, time lapse, weather sealing, HDR, focus stacking, USB charging, and wireless connectivity. The EOS RP obtains Canon's high end autofocusing system from the higher end EOS R with 4,779 AF points and Canon's dual pixel AF technology for smooth and confident focusing, but at only 440 grams body alone, the EOS RP remains the smallest and lightest full frame camera Canon's released to date, yet one that provides the excellent color science and intuitive design they're known for, and a camera that also provides a nice step up in image quality over their other entry level models. Overall, Canon's EOS RP is straightforward and easy to use, but even so, it offers much of the core functionality from the higher end EOS R without the higher end price, and it stands as the most affordable full frame camera to date, and it's a more powerful option for those not needing the video centric features from the higher end EOS R. Coming in at number two, Fujifilm's X-S10. 
Fujifilm's X-S10 is a departure in design, sure, but it's quite a successful one. Released in 2020, it features a 26 megapixel sensor, 1080p 240 frames per second, and 4K 30 frames per second video. It also provides a 3 inch vari angle touchscreen, image stabilization, panorama, multiple exposures, time lapse, HDR, focus bracketing, and wireless connectivity. The X-S10 obtains the high end autofocusing system from the flagship X-T4 with 425 points and it marks one of the few cameras that can focus down to negative 7 EV, essentially full darkness. It's also one of the few cameras in its particular class to remove the optical low pass filter on the sensor, increasing fine image quality, and even less so offering sensor stabilization rated for six stops. Yet it does all of this at 20 frames per second with focus or a whopping 30 frames per second with the 1.25 times crop mode in Fuji's full suite of classic film simulations. Overall, Fujifilm's XS10 is an excellent option for enthusiasts wanting the industry setting features of the X-T4 without its price, and as a package, it represents Fuji's best all-around camera and a surprising release on their end. Coming at number one, Nikon's D3500. Nikon's D3500 is their latest entry-level DSLR in the Hallmark D3000 series, and it's a camera aimed squarely at beginners looking for a powerful upgrade over a smartphone. Released in 2018, it features a 24 megapixel sensor and 1080p 60 frames per second video. It also provides a 3 inch rear LCD, flicker reduction, and Bluetooth connectivity. The D3500 uses an 11 point autofocusing system with dynamic and 3D tracking, a combination typically reserved for Nikon's higher end professional DSLRs. 3D tracking allows the autofocusing points to work cohesively, significantly improving the camera's tracking abilities, but crucially, it's one of the few entry-level DSLRs that removes the optical low-pass filter, a notable strength compared to its rivals. The D3500 also obtains Nikon's phenomenal guide mode, which teaches beginners how to shoot various mediums in camera, and with a battery life of 1,550 shots on a single charge, you'll have little difficulty capturing moments every time. Sure, the Nikon D3500 is a simple camera, mostly lacking flashy features, but for the price and the power here, it provides outstanding value, and it's a camera that will get the job done, and one that won't hurt the bank account much in the process, which is always welcomed. So there you have it, my friends. There's our list of the best cameras for photography. For more information on this list or to read the detailed guide, look at the pinned comment in the description down below, and I'll take you right to the full post. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. Photography. Photography. <laughs> 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 <laughs>